Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm reviewing two episodes of Arrow all together. We're talking City of Blood and Streets of Fire. Uh, really sorry that it's been so long since so taking me so long to get this up. Uh, I've just been absolutely slammed with my training here in Chicago. They told <laughs> told us the workload would lighten up after the first two weeks, and uh, in my case, I kind of drew the short straw. Long story short, and it didn't. So. I'm um, working away the whole weekend, but uh, I did manage to grab a little time now to uh, just really quickly talk about these episodes. Again, this is going to be much more brief than I would really like, but I'm going to do try and do two episodes at once. So let's just kind of get right into things. I got every get the details right here on the good old iPad. So let's start. Uh, not a huge amount to say about what was going on in the flashbacks. Um, Definitely did let, am liking the bond between Oliver and uh, KG Beast, Alexi, or however you say his name. Uh, and I really do kind of want to see more about what happens with those two characters. Because remember, as we learned in the early episodes, Oliver, uh, he apparently did keep his promise to Oliver and did teach him Russian. Because we hear Russian speak, Oliver speak Russian to uh, one of the Queen family servants in the very first episode I believe it was so there's definitely more on more to be told there especially in regards to Oliver eventually getting that Bratva tattoo and uh, of course uh, the whole uh, flashback thing that was a really nice setup for Oliver actually quoting something that Professor Ivo said I mean what a what a supreme irony that I, Oliver would draw a genuine lesson from the a man like Ivo but it's apparently something that he seems to have really taken to heart, and that's why he was willing to sacrifice himself to Slade. Um, also, cool to have Walter back again. I, I really do feel that Walter is a character who this season really has just been in the background. And of course, it makes sense that he was more in the foreground last season, but I just think that Walter is a very solid character, and I wish they had done more with him this season. Uh, let me see here. Uh, since we talked about Felicity, uh, she doesn't have a huge amount going on these two episodes. She's just uh, doing her helper thing. We did learn, however, that Felicity's mom was a cocktail waitress, and apparently her Las Ve hometown is Las Vegas, uh, which, of course, you know, sets up some interesting situations as to, who, again, who her father could be, but obviously we're not going to be getting into that until next season. And, you know, nothing about well, put it bluntly, knocking up a cocktail waitress in Vegas really screams any particular character from the DC universe to me. But Felicity did have some really wonderful moments of just really being the heart of the team, being the person who was there to say to Oliver what he needed to hear, what he needed to hear it. Especially when he gave that supremely ironic line of, I have failed this city. And Felicity was the one who kind of gave Oliver the mental dope slap that he needed. Um, so yeah, that was really, really great. Not a huge amount to say about what's going on with Dig here. Uh, definitely am enjoying the animosity between Dig and Ravager. I mean, it makes sense that, uh, you know, <clears throat> Isabel would not be a fan of Dig, given that he uh, pretty much almost killed her. Although, I'm, and I know I'm not the only one who's confused by this. I saw Charlie over at Emergency Awesome was confused by it as well as, why does Isabel have this mad on for Felicity, getting back to her briefly? I mean, uh, part of me kind of hopes that Felicity is what is, what, uh, Isabel is hallucinating in her head for whatever reason, you know. Although, most likely, the most likely candidate would actually be, uh, Robert Queen, if you ask me. That would just make her even more of a mirror for to Slade, given uh, what's happened with her. And um, just look at my notes here. Yeah, yeah, that covers everything I had to say about Dig and Felicity. Uh, let's talk about Laurel real quick. Uh, first of all, Laurel, if you're going to plant a bug in somebody's office, don't plant something that's you know, gonna blink and emit light. I mean, if somebody turned off the light in Sebastian Blood's office, I'm pretty sure there's a good chance they'd have seen that stupid thing. Now, granted, ultimately, it does become fairly irrelevant fairly quickly. 
But it does lead to Laurel having that cool scene at the police station with her dad and uh, the CSI guy. Uh, he was actually given a name in one episode, but I don't remember what it is. And just because it's fun, I'm going to continue to call him Greg. Oh dear, one of the Mirakuru soldiers killed Greg. No, no, not Greg! Of course, uh, Mirakuru guys also have apparently killed in Starling City the chief of police. Uh, they killed friggin' Kate Spencer. So uh, she's not going to be becoming Manhunter. Although this does conveniently flee Laurel from the fact that she twice blackmailed the city's district attorney. Yeah, well, I guess Laurel gets away with blackmail. Uh, good for Laurel. And of course, it's ultimately uh, Isabel who takes down Brother Blood. <clears throat> Not a huge amount to say about what uh, was going on with Brother Blood. Just to, like, seriously, dude, how much of a sucker were you? I mean, that speech he gave about the mask at the very end, well, that was all well and good, but seeing as how that was basically right before he died, it just didn't really... Uh, that was something I think they should have established beforehand, basically, so they could really have some time to sink in and resonate with us as we watch Sebastian Blood as a character. It was like, oh, by the way, here's, the, here's why I walk around in this stupid mask. No, 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 no. No, that that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah. Uh, one thing that I noticed in um, uh, City of Blood, they mentioned a, a thing called. It sounded to me Rock Avenue, and I can't help but wonder if this wasn't uh, a nod to the character of Arthur Rock, A.K.A. Sergeant Rock one of uh, DC's famous World War II characters. Again, I might have heard that wrong, but uh, that's something that just crossed my mind. And I'm sure there were some other Easter eggs hidden in the names of streets that were mentioned in these episodes. But this is one of those er aspects where, of the show where people sometimes tend to mumble a little bit too much. I know in uh, Streets of Fire, I had went back and tried to listen at least twice when uh, I thought that was going on, and I just couldn't make out what they were saying. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's let's continue talking about the good guys, and then we'll uh, f talk about the bad guys. Uh, moving on with the good guys. Since we brought up Laurel, let's move on to Sarah. And this, it was really Streets of Fire that was the big stuff with Sarah. We never do find out exactly where it is that she went, but if you've seen the uh, previews for the next episode, I don't think it's too hard to guess. Uh, but this episode was really just sort of, Sarah, again, really struggling with that self-loathing that she has, her inability to let go of the past, and really believe that she is a redeemable person. And I thought that that Laurel's line of, you know, how could you be so bad if they gave you uh, such a pretty name? Well, that's dumb. Nightshade is, has a pretty name, but it still will kill you. But Sarah's, you know, saving that kid. Okay, you went, you ran into a build, burning building to save the life of a child. It's pretty hard not to feel good about yourself afterwards. And I did have to say that I did have to say I do have to say that yeah, it was laying it on a little thick. But Laurel afterwards at the police station saying, "Oh, that's the canary," while Sarah was there. I mean, again, that's really laying on the schmaltz. But you know, sometimes a little bit of that. It's what needs. It's what's needed to get the job done. People throw schmaltz out there because, hey, it works. A lot of people are suckers for it. Apparently, Sarah is one of them. This also is cool because it gives really, in my mind, strong credence that Sarah is going to survive. We're going to see her next season, continuing on as Black Canary, which is cool. I really like Katie Lots in this role. Uh, let me see here. Uh, not a huge amount to say about what's going on with Thea. Just uh, I like how she just completely and utterly rejects Malcolm Merlin the minute he shows up. I mean, she's obviously is a little, just based on pure survival instinct, uh, at least a little intrigued by the, okay, you hate me, at least let me get you out of here to safety. Now, I don't think for a second that she shot Malcolm there at the end. 
I'm pretty sure, like most people, that she shot the Mirakuru soldier who had popped up behind him. Or I'm kind of, part of me is actually hoping that there was actually some League of Assassins guy who popped out of the middle of nowhere and uh, Thea's going to get a lucky shot or two in on them. Because uh, remember, the League of Assassins basically has a death mark on good old Malcolm Merlin. So them uh, finding him in... Well, okay, we'll talk some more about the League of Assassins at another time. But let me see. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything I have to say about the heroes, so um, let's talk about the villains. already covered everything I have to say about uh, Brother Blood. I don't really have too awful much to say about Ravager. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to get to see ourselves a really awesome girl fight next episode. Uh, Ravager versus Canary, which I'm totally down for. That's going to be awesome. I do think it's a little cliche when female characters always end up fighting other female characters. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's fun too. So I'm not going to complain too hard about that. Uh, I do also like that, uh, you know, Ra uh, <clears throat> Isabel is also catching on that Slade is completely out of his gourd. Although, if she's also hallucinating, which seems to be an issue for people who are hepped up on Mirakuru, well, hmm, maybe she's maybe she's not quite as uh, put off by that as we may have initially been led to believe. Who knows? It's it's really hard to tell. Ah. Uh, now Slade, oh, I love what's going on with Slade. Again, he's keeping it pretty low-key, letting everything just sort of play out. Because we know next episode is the season finale, and this is the episode that's going to be all about Slade going nuts, and everybody having to team up to take him down. So, that's cool and all, but I do love that speech she gives us about Nero watching Rome burn, and it just shows you how completely and utterly ruthless Slade is. He's willing to destroy a city of about half a million people for one guy. Which is not that dissimilar from what Amanda Waller is trying to do with, uh, oh gee, I'm going to have to blow up Starling City and kill half a million people to stop 50 guys. Really, Amanda, I'm pretty sure if you're going to use drones, you could use them a lot to kill the Miracruru soldiers and be a lot more effective about it than having to wipe out the entire city. I mean, has this been cleared with the president? How in the name of God are you going to explain blowing up an entire city of half a million people? I mean, this is the one episode of X aspect of what's going on here that I just find absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you've got Suicide Squad, you've got the military, you know, these Mirakuru dudes are tough, but I don't think they could take getting blasted with, with a missile or shot with those miniguns they have on attack helicopters or something. There's got to be more effective ways of dealing with this situation than blow up Starling City. I mean, if blow up a city is your A plan, yeah, no, that that's just stupid. It's 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 ridiculous, false drama, and uh, I, I'm I, I am not cool with that. I expect better from the show than this. And, uh, oh yeah, we can't forget about uh, Quentin Lance. Uh, he gets reinstated, going back to the good guys briefly. And now it looks like that even the cops are willing to admit, hey, we kind of need the vigilante, which really sets up a, some very intriguing possibilities for next season as to what's going to be going on there. I mean, vigilanteism is n just not going to be condoned, but, again... Who else, who else can handle guys like this? And of course, maybe some kind of quasi-relationship between the Arrow and the city. Well, obviously Quentin's in a good place for that. But Laurel is also there, so a father and daughter cooperating there. Hmm, interesting stuff. Um, oh yeah, speaking of stuff, I really wasn't too wild with the whole Laurel fires the bow thing, because big deal. Uh, oh yeah, of course we got to talk about Malcolm. Uh, I read an interview with John Barrowman where he says he actually thinks that Malcolm was actually, is taking Moira's death very hard, but him being Malcolm, he's keeping it very close to the vest and is really only concerned with getting Thea to safety. 
because as he said that's all he's got in the world and uh, you know I read that uh, I do agree with that interpretation of the character but um, yeah I can't really think of too awful much else that I have to say about Malcolm he's only got a few minutes of screen time and as I said he's really just all about Thea and getting her safe at this point he isn't even particularly concerned if she hates him he just doesn't want to lose anybody else and uh, I think that does cover it guys next episode oh my god this is gonna be just absolutely beyond sane this is this is gonna be one of the best hours of television this year I can feel it so with that guys I'm gonna call it here as always please comment rate and subscribe and of course you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi so next time take care and have a good one <laughs>